Vulcan Centaur production begins with aluminum sheets expertly machined to remove more than two-thirds of the weight, resulting in the structurally strong yet lightweight orthogrid panels that form Vulcan's propellant tanks. The panels are then bump-pressed to form the curves required to complete the tanks. At the same time, rings, adapters, and other structural components are precision milled. Next, the aluminum domes, panels, and other structures that form Vulcan's propellant tanks are first cleaned and etched to a smooth, even surface, and then anodized to harden and prevent corrosion. Following an ultrasonic inspection, five completed panels for the liquid methane tank are assembled and joined together using friction stir welding. Unlike traditional welding, where filler material is used to join components, friction stir welding uses a head to stir the metal of the two panels together as it moves down the seam. The resulting joint is stronger and produces a lighter weight, higher performing tank. The process is repeated to create the liquid oxygen, or LOX tank, followed by attaching domes to complete the tanks. Circumferential friction stir welding is then used to join the two propellant tanks that comprise the Vulcan booster. As production continues on the booster stage, stretch-forming gore panels for the Centaur second-stage propellant tanks is underway. The stainless steel gore panels are welded together to create the propellant tank domes. The gore welder is one of several highly specialized welding stations in the Centaur production process. Just down the aisle, Centaur 5's massive intermediate bulkhead is mated to its ultra-thin tank. Once both propellant tanks are welded, they're mated together to create the Centaur 5 second stage. Before moving to final assembly, the 5.4 meter booster welds are sprayed with foam insulation, followed by booster mask and paint. Twin BE4 engines are individually hot-fired prior to making their way to the factory. They are then mated to Vulcan's thrust structure and protected by a heat shield. With production complete, Vulcan's first and second stages depart the Decatur factory and make their way to ULA's rocket ship to begin their journey to the launch site. Meanwhile, at Cape Canaveral's Space Launch Complex 41, modifications have been made to the launch pad to accommodate the Vulcan rocket. The water suppression system has been upgraded and tested, along with other updates, including new, larger fuel storage tanks. Additionally, in the Vertical Integration Facility, or VIF, Platforms have been modified to accommodate this larger vehicle. Following the journey to Cape Canaveral, the Vulcan components are offloaded from rocket ship and transported to the VIF, where they are lifted onto the newly constructed Vulcan Launch Platform, or VLP. The vehicle then travels a third of a mile to the pad to fill both propellant tanks, followed by flight readiness firing of the booster stage, 